Hey everyone. I think it's really important before we get into the march and some of our thoughts and reactions to it, it's really important that we also think about the people in Pittsburgh right now and we let that investigation take its course. We're learning more about it. It, it really, it's so unfortunate that during this event where there was so much love and so much happiness that at the very same time there were people that were experiencing extreme fear there were people that were losing their lives they were hurting and i just hope very much that it, that we just all send our love and our positivity and send our care and our prayers out to these victims and their families and now more than ever it's so important that we really start to speak up and take a stand against this kind of violence. It is so incredibly important and that's why I was so, so happy to see that there was no violence at the walk away march. You know, that was something I was concerned with. There were hardly any protesters there. I'll, I'll get more on that in a second. Uh, very few critics. It, it really, from, from the moment that we stepped off the train and, and approached the opening rally, it was just love and positivity. And it just, it, I, I think everyone, you know, everyone that was there, hopefully everyone that was watching from home, I hope that you also got the same sense of that love and just this incredible positive vibe that was coming from everyone there. I, I, I got more hugs and, and more just genuine smiles and, than I've gotten in a long time. And man, I've, I've heard from a few of my, my new conservative friends that this is sort of similar. I think it's sort of what a Trump rally probably might be like, although I think it's important to note it wasn't a Trump rally. There, there were Trump supporters there. Uh, there were also, you know, people a little bit more like me. There, there weren't, there, there really were not as many people as I think I think critics would say you know as many people that were pro Trump or were trying to tell you to vote for Trump honestly that and and at no time did anyone ever personally tell me to do that uh it it really was about pro freedom of thought and just making the decision for yourself that that was the over overlying message from a lot of the speakers was just think for yourself do your own research and come to your own conclusions make your own decision and as long as you're doing that then i support whatever decision that you make you know and that's that's what you that's ultimately what this process is about we have to allow each other to have our vote and have our say and ultimately if someone gets all the facts and for whatever crazy reason they decide that they are still way over on the left um you know i i I think you're wrong and I'm going to respectfully tell you that I think you're wrong, but I'm not going to, you know, disavow you or insult you for your thoughts. Um, and that's really what the, the spirit of that, that the whole place was about. The opening rally was a ton of fun and I'll be honest, I, I kind of had a little more fun at that opening rally than I did at the, the actual official one. It, just seeing all these faces from YouTube, all these people that I watch and I, I got to meet Uber guy and I, I kind of fangirled out on him a little bit and uh, he was so sweet and kind and, and just just <laughs> took it all in stride that I, I had like a total total just nerd moment um but he's he's someone who i look to when i need motivation and when i need to feel like it's okay to keep going it's okay to keep adding my voice to this movement so if, if you're ever feeling down if you're ever in the mood for you know a, a really a really positive individual that is going to fire you up and get you excited about this i highly recommend checking uber guy out i'll i'll put a link um over to his uh page uh if if you're a fan of the if you're part of the facebook group then you know i also got to meet joshua warren and he's um a big person over on facebook i i i also geeked out a lot um Joshua, if you're seeing this, it was such an honor and and it was such a pleasure to meet you and your wife and 
the work that you do on Facebook to promote other people to think for themselves is just incredible and if, if you're on Facebook look for Joshua Warren he's amazing I'll put a link to him as well but he he embodies the spirit of this campaign this idea of civil discourse and the ability to disagree with each other with respect but also what what i really love about what joshua does is that he backs everything that he says up with facts so if if you ever need you know advice or you need help from from someone who actually knows how to handle themselves in a debate he's fantastic and he really does it with with class and with grace and respect and and it's it's something to be admired um when we got there, people were asking about the artist, and that was Jordan Page. He was excellent. Uh, there was also a surprise appearance by Terrence K. Williams. I, I, I have to, like, turning around and, and having him, like, pop up right next to me. It was, it was just, uh, it was great. It was, it was so much fun. He was hilarious. Uh, he, he, he and Owen Schroyer were, like, the highlights of that, that opening. Uh, it was really great that they came out and they took the time. Uh, from there, we all um, gathered up, we went to the march. Now, here's where I think there's a, a, a big discrepancy between what the press is covering, what critics are saying, and, and what's coming from the people that were there. So I, I'd like to just make something clear about the, the march attendance and the rally attendance. So that day in DC, it was very cold, very cold, windy, rainy, it, it was not pleasant. I, I really believe that a lot of people stayed away from the rally, uh, both the opening rally and the, the actual official rally, which is a shame because th they were amazing. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. It was like a big party and just so much love. It, it, was, it was amazing. But there were a lot of people that showed up for that march. And DC police estimated it was a little bit over 5,000 that marched that day. So I, I really, I really believe that what ultimately ended up happening was that people just showed up to march. So they showed up to march, they did their thing, and then they got to where they were going and then they left. And, you know, I, I can't fault anyone for making that decision. It was really cold and miserable out there. And what, what we noticed um, as we were walking around and talking to people, most of the people that we talked to were from out of town. And a lot of them were surprised to meet people that were local. So uh, again, that's my thoughts is I, I think a lot of a lot of the locals just showed up to march and left. Um, and, and everyone that actually, you know, took the time, the money, the effort to fly out, it made a lot more sense for them to stick around because, you know, they've already paid their money. What, you know, why would they leave? So it, it, the rallies didn't have as much attendance as, as I think we all would have liked. But the march to me was what was the most important. You know, it was, it was the most important to have that showing. But sadly, it was the part that none of the press wanted to cover. And, and what's frustrating is that if you, if you look around at the image that they're sharing, um, <clears throat> it's very akin to Trump's inauguration photos. You know, if you learn a little bit more about those, you'll, you'll learn how those were tweaked to, to fit a narrative. And that's exactly what happened to us on Saturday. So the, the really main photo that's going around is this one of, they're, they're calling it the march, but it's actually, it's actually a crowd of people waiting, waiting at that main rally site at Freedom Plaza. It's a bunch of people waiting at Freedom Plaza for the, the march to get there. We hadn't gotten there yet. And, and so it, it, it just goes to show you how, how frustrating that can be. And, and so once we got there, it was amazing. There, we had, we had a little like mini dance party, which, which unfortunately ended up getting some, some streamers in trouble from what I was seeing from my own, uh, from my own stream. I was very fortunate to be able to get about four hours of, of continuous footage. And I, I hung in there for as long as I could. I'm still sore. I was sitting there for hours like this with my little tripod. And, um, but man, it was amazing. And oh gosh, okay, I always take so long in these. I'll wrap it up. 
but it was an amazing day um, to answer. I got, I got, look, I even got like this thing so that I, I don't get off track because I want to make sure that I tell everyone all the cool stuff that I got to see while I was there. So one of the coolest things that happened while I was there, when we got first got to the march, um, there was the music, there was the dance party, and some of the people watching had warned me, you know, hey, they could be pulling people because of the music, get away. So we had to, we actually, we had to leave the rally and get like far out on the perimeter. And, but while we were doing that, we ended up bumping into the East Coast chapter president for Bikers for Trump. They showed up to protect us. They were there. They they lined the whole march route and they each, you know, they were each standing there like every few feet just waving us on, protecting us from from traffic, from from the non-existent counter protesters that never showed up uh, until when I got to see um, this amazing man that came with uh, lots of people to show us support and protect us and keep us safe. And so a few of you were asking, were there counter protesters? So from the, the East Coast chapter president's mouth, uh, he stated that when they first arrived at Freedom Plaza before some mo the marchers, there were about seven uh, Antifa members that were waiting for us at Freedom Plaza. So they saw them, a few of them, including the gentleman I was speaking to, began to approach this group, and that's when he says that they took off. So that, uh, according to the people that were there to protect us from this, that was the extent of the counter protest that, that showed up, seven people. And they tuck tailed and ran as, as soon as anyone with a backbone showed up. So um, it was amazing. Uh, the, the national anthem by Shea Penn was just a, a beautiful moment. She's the daughter of one of the women that helped found uh, the Walk Away campaign at, with Brandon. And um, let's see, before I got cut off, I think everyone could agree, like the, the, the speech that really hit us was Pastor Mark Burns and his speech is on Twitter. I, I sent that out if you wanna check it out. It was just, man, it brought the house down. It was amazing. If you have a chance, check that out. Uh, once my feed was killed, I, I was so frozen, like to the core. Um, a huge thank you to uh, Vic C and Link to C, both of both subscribers that I bumped into. They hustled me out of there. We we got some hot coffee. I I started warming up. It was it was just a crazy day, but um, I was able to get back in time to see Brandon speak. And if you haven't had a chance to watch his speech, please, please watch it. It is, it is so powerful. It's so moving uh, at, from, from someone else who has struggled for years in the past with substance abuse issues. It just, it, it really, it really cut me and it, it reminded me why we love this man so much and it, it just reminds you that every day is a struggle for all of us. And as, as he said, it, it really just takes one person to step up. And I'm so grateful that Brandon was that one person that stepped up and just, just the result, the, the feeling of love and, and positivity that Brandon created and you saw it embodied there the, on Saturday. What, what a fantastic day. What, what a great way to spend a weekend. And I, I'm so sorry that it, it had to also be offset by tragedy because it, it would have just been wonderful with, with the Young Black Leadership Summit and the Walk Away March both happening you know, right on the same weekend. It was, it was a really positive weekend for conservatives in DC. And I just, I, as we're go coming into this week and we're processing what happened in Pittsburgh and what might happen as we get up closer to the midterms, I, I really hope that all of us can just continue to hold on to that love 
you know, remember all the hugs that we gave, all the hugs that we received that weekend. If you were watching from home, remember all the times that you, you smiled. Remember all the times that you felt good and you felt proud to speak up, to, to speak your mind, to be yourself. There, it was just a wonderful day. And I hope that if you weren't able to come, I mean, watch some of the footage and, and enjoy some of that feeling and let that into your life a little bit. Uh, so I'll, I'll have some more videos this week, but I really thank all of you who tuned in on Saturday. I really thank all of you who shared that video. I know that's not going to be go. I know that video is not going to get spread around. I, you know, I, I and it, it just... It's, I, I wanted to record for as long as possible because I wanted there to be a testament to how many people were there and how nonviolent we were and how loving we were. So, uh, all right, I'm sorry guys, I always ramble, but um, thank you everyone. And, and the last thing I'm just gonna say as, as I'm leaving is just a, a big, big thank you to um, at Layoff Blog over at Twitter. Uh, he heard about the mic issues that I've been having and he actually donated uh, the funds for me to get a new mic. So that should be coming soon. So at Layoff Blog, if, if you don't follow him on Twitter, he's, he's really great. He, he does some really great replies. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll sound better soon, thanks to him. So I'm so sorry this was long, guys. I, I hope everyone loved their time on Saturday. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Like and share. Tell me what you thought. All right. Take care.